Hi, uh, youth of Cornerstone. I want to welcome you to the Sunday service today on April 5th. Again, we're continuing with our online service. Uh, hope that everyone is doing all right. Uh, let's start off with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. No matter what the situation is in the world, the situation in our hearts will never change, Lord. You are our God. You are our Lord. And today is your day, and we are here to praise your name and to give you thanks and to worship you, Lord. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would just lift us up into your presence, Lord, that we will be touched in our heart, that as we sing your praise, Lord, that we would refresh our love for you and ready our, our hearts to receive your word. We thank you. And we pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today we'll be singing uh, Made to Worship by Chris Tomlin. So if you could uh, get the lyrics out on your phone. And uh, you might want to pause. And then when you're ready, let's get started, okay? Before the day. Before the light, before the world revolved around the sun, God and I stepped down into time and wrote the story of His love for everyone. He has filled our hearts with wonder so that we always remember you and I were made to worship you and I are called to love you and I are forgiven and free when you and I embrace surrender you and I choose to believe and you and I will see what we were meant to be all we are and all we have is all the gift from God that we will see brought to life we open up our eyes to see the majesty and glory of the King. He has filled our hearts with wonder so that we always remember you and I were made to worship, you and I are called to love, you and I are forgiven and free. You and I embrace surrender, you and I choose to believe, and you and I will see what we were meant to be. Even the rocks cry out, even the heavens shout at the sound of this holy name. So let every voice sing out, and let every knees bow down, He is worthy of all our praise. You and I were made to worship, you and I are called to love, you and I are forgiven and free. But you and I embrace surrender, you and I choose to believe, and you and I will see what we were meant to be. You and I were made to worship, you and I are called to love, you and I are forgiven and free. You and I embrace surrender, you and I choose to believe, and you and I will see 
what we were meant to be. What we were meant to be. Amen. All right. So today, scripture is going to be Haggai. You guys are not probably familiar with this. This is in the Minor Prophets. Haggai chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Uh, the, top, the title of the message today is Two Houses in Our Lives. Okay. So pause, get your Bibles ready. And let's read together. Haggai chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, the, the son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the Jehozadad, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, these people say, The time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in paneled houses, while this house lies in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build a house that I may take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much and behold, it came to little. And you brought it home. I blew it away. Why? Declares the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that lies in ruins. While each of you busies himself with his own house. I'm sure you probably could kind of guess where this message is going. Because those scripture right there. That's the message. I could just stop now. And you'll know exactly what Haggai is trying to say. Uh, how many remember our scripture from last week? We read from Ezra, and the story was about how king, how the king was moved, that God moved him. So he released all of the Israel's, Israelites who wanted to go and build the temple. Okay. Now, uh, Ezra chapter 1. I'll read this. Let's read this together, okay? Thus says Cyprus, king of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build them a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. So, these Israelites, it's not like they were free from captivity and sent back to Jerusalem so they could start a better life for themselves. That could be consequential, of course, but the reason, the main reason why they were set free to go to Jerusalem, to go back home, was so that they could rebuild the house of the Lord, the temple of God. So when the Israelites were freed and arrived at Jerusalem, did they do what they were there to do? Did they rebuild God's house? Well, let's look at verse 2. Haggai chapter 1 verse 2. It says this, Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Apparently for these Israelites who came to Jerusalem, the time hasn't come. So what's this about? What are they waiting for? When will they know if the time has come or not? Why is it not the time when it was God himself who released them in his time? Verse, says, verse 4 says this, Is it a time for you yourselves to build in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? 
Yes, it seems that these people did not rebuild God's house because they were too busy building their own house. This is quite serious if you think about it. But this brings me back to now. When we were first saved, when we were first set free, when we repented of our sin, and we said, Jesus Christ, we believe you. Wash us of all our sin and free us. What were we free to do? What was the reason that God freed us from sin? <coughs> well, just like what we read today, we were set free from this captivity. We were set free, not in Babylon, but from our sins. We were set free to build the temple of God, to rebuild it. In our life right now, what is the temple of God? Well, it is us. We left our sin. We left our old ways. We left our Babylon. And we came to the new Jerusalem. We were born again into this new kingdom so that we could rebuild the temple of God. We are the temple of God. We are here to rebuild ourselves so that God could not reside in buildings, but in our hearts. You know, when you first believed in God, and you said, God, free me. God said, yes, I will free you. But I want you to rebuild yourself to be my house, because I'm going to live in you. So, let me ask you, all of you who profess Christianity, what are you building right now? Are you building the house of God? Are you building yourself so God could live, reside in you? Every one of us are building something. Every one of us has 24 hours. Time waits for no one. Time goes. And we spend each minute, each hour, each day. Well, what are we building? Are we building the house of God? Or are we building, too busy building our own house? Some people spend their time and their effort to build worldly houses so they can live comfortably. While others spend their time and effort to build house of God so that God can reside comfortably. I want you to think about this. We are the temple of God. We are the house of God. We are buildings God's, we are the building that are not built by these bricks and mortars, but the bricks and mortars of God's word. Are some of you, are you saying to God, well, it's not time yet. God, wait. Are you being like these Israelites who are telling God, it is not yet time for you, God. Let me finish high school. Let me go to college. Let me finish college. Let me get a career. Let me get started on my career. Well, let me get married. Let me have a kid. Well, let me nurture my kid, parent my kid. Let me send my kids off to college. Are you asking God to just wait for you until you are fully built of your own house? Because if you are, that day will never come. God tells us in verses 5 and 6, it says this, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You close yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into a bag with holes. If you're asking God to wait for you, that day will never come. Because that's how sin operates. Sin is always hungry. Sin is never satisfied. 
Now, I want you to look back to your life. I want to close with this. Go back to the first time when you dedicated your life to God. I still remember my first time. It was the time when I realized God's love for me. It's not about heaven or hell or what I could get out of God's prayer and how much it could better my life or make me a better person. It was none of that. I was a sophomore in high school and the only thing I remember is this overwhelming realization of God's love for me and how much I was sorry that I didn't accept Him, that I was indifferent to Him, and how heartbroken God must have been. That was the first time I believed in God, and till now I have rededicated my life so many times after that. At times I rededicated my life because I drifted so far away from God that I lost the happiness, I lost the joy in my life. And I looked around and I couldn't find it. And I found myself so far away from God. So I rededicated my life and I brought myself back to God. Sometimes I rededicated my life because I saw sin in my life. That that sin was blockading my relationship with God. And I had to rededicate my life to God. I want you to ask yourself, when you first accepted God, when you first committed yourself to God, what was the reason? When you ask God to forgive you your sin, well, what were you free to do? What did you want that freedom to do? Did you want that freedom so you could be free from the stranglehold of sin so you could rebuild your life for God so God could reside in you and you could be one with God? Or is it so you could build a better house, worldly house for yourself? Today, our message that we read today in Haggai is the same with the message that God is giving us today. I'm sending you. I'm freeing you so you could build my temple. If you're telling me that you're too busy because you first want to dwell in your paneled houses while my house lays you in ruin, you're going to be in big trouble. If your physical house, your physical life is more important to you that what you're saying is God wait until I finish these things in the world first until I dwell in my paneled house first and then I'll see what I can do about my spiritual life you need to remember this that freedom that Jesus got for you came at a very high price that Jesus, the God Almighty, sacrificed His life for you to get you that freedom. And I pray that you will not waste that. As I close, I pray that all of us would rededicate our lives right now to rebuilding the house of God that is in ruins. Rebuilding our broken spiritual lives now, not waiting till later. All of us, all of you, rebuild your life. Starting now, starting at this moment, even though it's little by little, one brick at a time. And again, this house is not going to be built overnight. If you're expecting some kind of a spiritual highness right now, tomorrow, and expecting it to last throughout your life, well, it ain't going to happen. But your life, your house will be rebuilt one brick at a time. But there will be satisfaction in seeing the progress of your house as the columns go up, as the roof comes down, as the wall goes up, as the finishing gets put on and God comes in. I pray that all of us would dedicate our lives right now 
to spending some time, some effort to rebuilding God's house in your life by doing your QT, spending time in QT, and taking that message that you got in your day, morning QT and meditating on it and just regurgitating that word throughout the day and continuing your day in prayer. And whatever God has put in your heart through the word, whatever God has allowed you to see through your eyes, through your prayer, do those little things. Love your neighbor. Help your neighbor. Love your parents. Love your siblings. Do something for people who are in need, especially in these times. Don't ask. Don't say, after coronavirus is gone. Let's start now. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. First of all, I would like to just repent. Me and for all of us who need repentance, Lord. For all of us who told you to wait, that we're too busy with our lives, Lord. That building a paneled house for, for our lives was more important than building your house, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. I know you have already forgiven us, Lord, and and we thank you so much for your love, your unbounding love, your unbounding forgiveness, that you free us so we could start rebuilding our house. You paid the ultimate price, but you give it to us gladly, without without really pushing us, Lord, that you're just holding your arms open, just waiting for the prodigal sons to come home, Lord. And I pray that all of us, Lord, would at this moment rededicate our lives so we could ready our body, our soul, our mind as your house, Lord, that we would tidy it up, we would clean it, and we welcome you into our life. We thank you and we pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today, we had a short message, so let's sing another song today, okay? Uh, let's sing the song uh, Redeemed by Big Daddy Weave. Uh, so get the lyrics and let's sing another one. Seems like all I could see was the struggle Haunted by ghosts that live in my past Bound up in shackles of all my failures Wondering how long is this gonna last? Then you look at this prisoner and say to me, Son, stop fighting a fight, it's already been won. I am redeemed. You said, So I'll shake off these heavy chains And wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed All my life I have been called unworthy By the voice of my shame and regret But well, when I hear you whisper Child, lift up your head I remember, oh God You're not done with me yet I am redeemed You said 
out, shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain, cause I'm not who I used to be, because I don't have to be the old man inside of me, cause this day is long dead and gone, because I've got a new name, a new life, I'm not the same, and I hope that will carry me on, cause I am redeemed, you set me free, so I'll shake off these heavy chains, and wipe away every stain, cause I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I used to be, Jesus, I'm not who I used to be, cause I am redeemed. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just bless our youth group, Lord, and keep them safe, Lord, throughout the week. And that they will be able to rebuild their house with firm, firm commitment, Lord. That whether it's coronavirus or not, Lord, that we are going to do what you would want us to do. We thank you. And I just bless that you would just keep all of them safe. Till next time. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Alright guys, see you next week. Bye.